I want to ask about the politics. And what I mean by that is, what is the organizing that needs to be done to get these ideas into mainstream discussion about development policy, and then to get them actually implemented in ways that have the concrete outcomes that we're looking for? So I'm, I guess I'm asking the process question. How do we get this stuff into the discussion and get it into actual practice? Well, I've been, this is part of my research, and this is what I spend most of my time thinking about at 1DC and, and working with other groups in the city. For one, I think we need to address the fact that uh, for the last about maybe 30, almost 40 years, we've had a rapid rise of nonprofits pop up. I think uh, Dr. Glover mentioned that earlier. Um, but not everyone has worked together. And this fragmentation has actually led to a stagnant, stagnant approach to dealing with politics. So my concern is more so trying to figure out how can we as organizations come together and transcend this ideology that we've been forced to, to internalize from the foundation models, uh, well, the funding-driven models of nonprofits, which is really to think through and say, okay, what would we want DC or the nation to look like in 20, 30, 50 years from now, and build off of that and have a movement-oriented dream that we then furnish our nonprofits with. And so for that, it would require us to actually develop a broad base alliance. We would have to get over our very, as I would say, tactical disagreements. Because mm -hmm. we tend to you know, think that there's only one way to do it, because that's how we end up getting funded, and we end up being different. But that desire to be different is actually hindering our ability to actually get together and see that vision. And ultimately, what we would hope is that, whether we call it the People's Platform or some other collective entity, that we would take and harness our political strength so we can actually do what we need to do. Because if our organizations are actually committed to equitable development, we have to be committed to equitable practices of movement building. We have to get back to the basics. That means we have to study. That means we have to critique some of these practices that we've you know, historically and contemporarily embrace and that means that we have to experiment with alternative practices as well. So when I think about the politics question, I actually, these days, I'm thinking about Jackson, Mississippi, especially just before Chakwa the Mumba died. But I think hopefully that they're still doing something. And what are they doing there? They actually had a vision to do a whole sort of what we call a solidarity economy movement in the city, right? Starting with the mayor and the city, you know, who was leading the city council and doing it, but with um, lots of grassroots uh, participation. What is that? So the grassroots bubbles up and says, you know, we have to have much more uh, community-friendly, community-based, community-owned, cooperatively-owned businesses. How do we do that? Um, you get your city, your mayor and your city council to actually start passing laws saying, guess what, the city's gonna start procuring their supplies from community-owned businesses and cooperatives. We're gonna have a um, cooperative incubator where we train people on how to be cooperative. We, we might even uh, transition some of the municipally owned companies into a co-op or more of a community-owned business. Um, they're having a huge conference, um, which is still going on even though the mayor has died in May to actually start training people on how to do co-op development, how to do the incubators, how to run the businesses, how to think about a city-wide, so not just creating one co-op or one community-owned organization, but a whole city-wide. Um, or even New York City, which surprised me. You know, I, I've been claiming that since I started working up there, um, suddenly the worker co-op movement has taken off, but you know, I probably shouldn't take the credit for it, but it certainly looks like. The correlation is pretty cool. Um, but anyway, there's a, a, a network of worker co-ops. There's social organizations that are actually saying, what do we do when we have people, especially immigrant women, but other people who come in and say, you know, we can't get a job, we don't know what to do, right? They actually started a whole co-op development program in some of the social service agencies because that was the only solution they could think of to help people who were coming into them who technically really just wanted services, right? But they suddenly realized they had to empower them to create their own businesses, run their own companies so that they wouldn't be uh, so underemployed or unemployed, et cetera. Well, that has trickled up. We now have, we just had a hearing, the city council, one of the city council members just called a hearing on how worker co-ops could help New York City. 
the uh, Federation of Protestant Social Service Organizations just put out a white paper a report on how worker co-ops can solve a um, low-income uh, job market problem. So getting groups right to trickle up from that need first, then to coalesce, and then to get harness your local governments, and then I believe things can triple up, tri trickle up from the local to the state, then to the federal as as more and more groups get interested and see what kinds of policies and stuff they need. 